A recent server-side bug makes a security camera suddenly insecure. John, you have a little bit of a scary story about some home camera capabilities. Yeah, and you know, certainly this isn't the first time we've heard a story about something like this. Um, and I guarantee it won't be the last, but this is this is an interesting one. And it's also sounds like it's mostly been mitigated at this point, but I think it's still kind of worth talking about. So uh, Eufy, again, challenging my pronunciation skills. I'm pretty sure it's E-U-F-Y, but I'm pretty sure it's pronounced Eufy, uh, is a security camera provider. They actually have a lot of smart home type of uh, um, gadgets that they uh, that they create and sell, um, in addition to like baby monitors, smart locks, alarm systems, and things like that. Um, but in any event, it was reported, uh, I think it was sometime uh, earlier this week, that some people had seen that when they would go into the UFI portal for their camera, that they were able to see other people's cameras um, and also be able to see uh, recordings that had been previously made you know, buy those other cameras and kind of look back. So uh, that obviously was a bit alarming that, um, you know, if I could see somebody else's camera, that probably means somebody else could see my camera as well. <laughs> so uh, that was getting a lot of buzz on Reddit and some of the other, um, you know, uh, uh, news platforms and whatnot. Uh, so Eufy was actually very quick to respond to this. Uh, they did take a look at it and probably within several hours of it even being reported, uh, certainly within like a 12 hour window, they were able to identify what the problem was, um, and resolve it. Uh, the way they explained it is that there was actually a software server upgrade that was, um, performed that, so this was a server side problem in the process of upgrading the server, it created this problem. So it wasn't something that was a problem in the cameras themselves, but was more, you know, on the server side, uh, which is also a little, you know, normally we've seen before uh, a lot of stories where the security cameras themselves that sit in your house um, is where the bug is. And okay. somehow that is able to be, uh, you know, accessed. But in, the, in this case, it was actually the server where the cameras report into that, um, that had an issue. And they claim it allowed a limited number, in quotes, of users to access video feeds from cameras belonging to other people, not themselves. Um, and that the problem only existed for a limited duration, uh, and it was addressed immediately by UFI. They didn't get into a lot of detail exactly explaining what the problem was, um, but it was more of a bug than a breach. They, they described it as a software bug. And uh, they did also want to kind of uh, make sure that people understood it was only um, you know, a certain class of smart home camera devices. So uh, the smart locks, their UFI baby monitors and alarm systems and the pet care products that they have uh, were not impacted by this, this software bug. Um, but just another one, I guess, if you're a UFI person, if you have, they're a pretty popular uh, security camera. And, um, you know, if you have one of those, I, I know they're, they're used in the U.S., but they're also used quite a bit um, in the UK, New Zealand, some of those other countries uh, overseas. So um, if you are a user of them, you might want to just touch base, make sure, you know, make sure you are updating uh, any software or firmware for those devices. Uh, not that you need to, uh, but it's always good practice anyway. Um, and just make, you know, um, you know, uh, maybe read uh, the disclosure that UFI has put out on their website. Uh, about this particular bug so you can understand if there's anything you need to be concerned about there. Yeah, I think uh, some of the people quoted in the article were from Australia. I think I remember that. But the, um, it, but the good thing about this is it was a server problem rather than having to kind of push software updates to all of their devices, which is obviously an easier thing um, uh, to resolve. But this is a, an interesting thing that, you know, as we we tell people to, you know, uh, update your servers and patch and do all of these things, <laughs> with all of those patching and all that stuff, you have to have reasonable testing to make sure that um, obviously you're not creating uh, new problems that, that are occurring. And at the speed of 
updates that companies are doing, you know, this this as a, a potential, obviously. Um, but thank God it was a very limited um, limited time span because uh, I can just imagine logging in and not seeing my own kids in the crib, but uh, seeing somebody right. else's babies, right, <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I'm sure it was pretty shocking to people when they went to check it. And uh, like you said, and uh, depending on what they expected to see. And, um, yeah, it's interesting. You know, you, you, I guess it's one of those things where this is a security camera. So you're kind of hoping that the company behind it um, have good uh, best practices around how they, uh, you know, approach their services and software to make sure that everything's done securely. And, you know, everybody makes mistakes. So it looks like they, they realized there was a mistake here and they addressed it very quickly. So, you know, uh, kudos to them for that. And, um, and like you said, uh, thankfully it was something that was resolvable without having to push patches out to all of their uh, customer devices and things like that. So, um, but just something to think about when you have these security cameras in your house, you know, a lot of people, Absolutely. I'm not one of those people that's paranoid. Like I have, I have, cameras in my home and I have ones that look out, you know, and, and whatnot on, an, on the yard, the backyard, front yard. Here's a case where if I had Eufy cameras, I would be like, oh, well, that's a little weird. I wonder what I said that, you know, six in the morning when this breach was vulnerable, if anybody, you know, <laughs> anyway. Yeah. But I also think that it's, um, if the um, boxes, since most people, and I'm sure this isn't you, John, um, aren't necessarily going in and thinking, oh, yeah, it's been a year. I should, like, see if there are any firmware updates that I need to download onto this box because a lot of them don't automatically update. You know, these companies don't really have these kind of concerns. Um, and so consumers do have to kind of watch. And, and as we know, uh, there's more and more of these devices that people have in their home and so in this case, it was a server, but, you know, we need to think about um, making sure that these updates occur right? so that your washing machine isn't the next thing, you know. Believe it or not, I have a washing machine that is Internet enabled. I have not turned it on. It came with the washing machine. I don't know why you need an Internet enabled washing machine, but, uh, you know. I know. There you it go. seems like everybody wants to internet enable everything nowadays, and I do agree with you. Like, I don't. Uh, my barbecue grill, you can connect to it with Bluetooth. Seriously. And see the temperature, and I'm like, I don't need that. I'll just walk over and look at it. You know, I don't know. Maybe I'm old school, but I don't really need to yeah. have it in everything. But um, right. but it is kind of cool in some places. You know, certainly smart TVs and things of those nature. Um, I definitely appreciate the added value of having a smart device that's internet enabled there. So anyway.